continue on that team, Team Singapore will be sending 647 athletes, the biggest contingent ever, and they will be competing in 48 sports. And we will see a whole new different sphere of sports in the Philippines. We'll see Sambo, Kurash, underwater hockey. I'm very, very excited to see that. And of course, skateboarding. So plenty to look forward to in the Philippines. An exciting lineup of events for sure. But we're going to start off today's segment with top 10 Team Singapore moments at the last two SEA Games chosen by you. Our first top 10 moment comes from the 2015 SEA Games when Singapore hosted the SEA Games and we had our best ever games performance delivering 84 gold, 73 silver and 102 bronze medals and that moment comes from track and field. Yes, that's right. And two of the medals belong to Shanti Pereira, the sprinter for Singapore. She, of course, got Singapore's first medal in the 100 meter sprint after 42 years by getting the bronze in the 100 meter sprint and then captured the goal in the 200 meter sprint. And we'll see footage of that right now. It was a fantastic race and she led all the way through. Great to see her at a national stadium winning it, of course, in front of the home fans. And it was a huge crowd when her name was cheered at the start and an even bigger cheer right at the end. The Republic Polytechnic student crossed the finish line to set a national record of 23.60 seconds. So a very memorable moment. That's why it makes top 10. Our next top 10 Team Singapore moment comes from the pool with the men's 4x200 meter freestyle final. Joseph Schooling, Hua Zhengwen, Pang Shengjun and Danny Yeo taking gold ahead of Malaysia and Indonesia. Now, of course, that was not the only swimming relay medal or gold medal that the team brought back but this was deemed as the most memorable and surfaced by you guys probably one of the most exciting races in that's recallable in recent memory and um, of course we'll be expecting a lot more to come from our swimmers in this coming sea games and so it's definitely something to look out for well whenever joseph schooling is in the pool you do expect singapore to get gold and for the netballers they also achieved gold in 2015 in a very very tense final against malaysia they held off the malaysians with a comeback in the four, final quarter to beat the causeway rivals 46 43 malaysia did overcome a five point deficit to tie the game at 39 goals apiece with seven minutes left on the clock however singapore did not let the pressure get to them and saw it through to the final to get gold medal for Singapore. How will they do in the Philippines this year? Hopefully they can repeat that feat. Yeah, exactly. Netball, of course, heavily contested, only appearing for the fourth time at the Games this year. Uh, the last three finals, of course, seeing mainly Singapore and Malaysia. And Malaysia, of course, in 2017, coming back to take the lead with two gold medals to Singapore's one uh, in Malaysia. But this year, it's going to be an exciting event to look forward to that's going to be held in Laguna. One of the most iconic moments of the 2015 SEA Games, of course, comes from the sport of Silat. Uh, Alfian crying on the podium after defeating then world champion Tran Dinh Nam from Vietnam to claim the Tanding Class F gold, the gold medal. And uh, this is probably a moment that Alfian himself has said before has been overplayed. But it's not, there's nothing that stands out more than anything else. Just look at the, the emotion that's written all over his face. For me, it is what embodies or it symbolizes what it really means to be a Team Singapore athlete and to fight for your country. No, I think sometimes, you know, the emotion of it all is so fantastic to see. People almost forget about the fight itself in the final and more about the whole him going onto the podium singing Majula Singapura, tears coming down his face. I think that is fantastic. And that's what sport is all about. You work so hard, you sacrifice so much, and then it all comes down to you winning the gold medal, and then the emotions just let go. And that's a beautiful moment for him and for Singapore sport. And one of the iconic moments of SEA Games 2017 was Kwa Jing Wen winning her first SEA Games title in the 200 meter butterfly final. Now Jing Wen was dominant in the 200 meter fly and surprised herself she spotted a sheepish grin after emerging from the national aquatic center pool her time of 2 minutes 12.03 seconds was more than 2.5 seconds clear of vietnam's leti mai tao and Jing Wen's swim also erased tao li's national record of 2.12.63 2.63 seconds set at the 2008 beijing olympics that's another one from the pool 
uh, plenty to, more to come uh, from this year, of course. And we do have some rising stars from swimming as well that you want to keep an eye out for that we will be touching on later on in this show. Our next moment in the top 10 Team Singapore moments from the last two SEA Games comes from the sport of bowling. Much has been said, of course, of our women's bowling team who has won plenty of medals, but this one was an historic moment for the men's bowling team. The first gold medal in 22 years. The team comprised Ki So, Jaris Go, Darren Ong, Chia Rui Han, Basil Ng and Timothy Thumb posting a final score of 6,399 pinfalls to emerge top of a seven-team field from coming from the Sunway Megalines. Massive achievement. Massive. Singapore! That's what he said, right? Yeah, that's what he said. That's what, that's what Keith said. That's what Keith said. That's what Keith said. All right, on we go to number seven in our top uh, 10 moments of the SEA Games from 2015 and 2017. And this time it is fencing and our golden girl, Ameta Bertier. Ameta took gold in the women's foil to earn Singapore's first gold in the fencing competition at the 2017 SEA Games. Bertier defeated her Filipino opponent, Samantha Kyle Kantantan, 15-7 in the individual foil finals and dedicated her win to her late father now that's fantastic from Amitha and you know so much struggles pre-event and then to use the strength to win gold now that's what you want to see from an athlete and a sportswoman it is certainly and of course her teammate Yuen Lau also followed up with another gold in the Sabre event for Team Singapore to conclude the fencing competition for Team Singapore to make it a successful uh, games for Singapore fencing in general Next in our top 10 moments for Team Singapore, the last two SEA Games comes from figure skating with Yu Shu Ran winning both the SEA Games and Team Singapore's first ever winter sport gold medal. That's quite an achievement of course. Her teammate Chloe Ng also coming in with a silver medal to make it a one-two finish for Team Singapore. We'll be definitely be looking for more to come from this sport, in fact, because there will be figure skating as well as speed skating in the 30th SEA Games in the Philippines. Our number 9 moment in the top 10 moments from SEA Games past from 2015 and 2017 belongs to Michelle Seung from the high jump. Now, Michelle was Singapore's first women's high jump winner in 52 years after a successful appeal back in 2017. She tied with her Vietnam opponent, 1.83 meters, but she became Singapore's second ever gold winner in the women's event after Chong Wai Hing's victory at the 1965 edition. So good on Michelle to, to win that and uh, great for Singapore. Of course, athletics and high jump, always a pet event for Singaporeans, always doing well. And hopefully we have a star in the making. We'll talk about him a little later on in the athletes to look out for in the 2019 games. but also a possibility possibility of getting gold in the high jump in 2019 exciting stuff indeed all right and our final top 10 moments from the last two sea games for team singapore is from wushu with joe and lim claiming gold in wushu for both tao shu and gun shu his combined score of 19.37 points putting him ahead of silver medalist ahmed kulefi of indonesia and second runner-up, Kao Jun Lim of Malaysia. And Wu Shu definitely also another promising event. We saw recently our Wu Shu team traveling overseas and a lot of young Wu Shu Team Singapore athletes going to make a mark in the future. Remember, you heard it here first. I think it's fantastic. We saw the top 10 moments from SEA Games past, but now it's all about looking forward to 2019. And hopefully, when we preview Vietnam in 2021, we will add some spectacular performances from 2019 in the top 10 SEA Games moments of all time. Indeed, when we come back, we're going to have a look at six rising stars from Team Singapore that you should keep a lookout for in the 2019 SEA Games and that you may not have heard about yet. Don't go away. Today is the day. Today is our day. We march together. We play together. We believe together. It is your roar we want. It is your passion we need. Because when Singapore roars together, 
We are stronger. We are faster. We are as one. Are you with us? Welcome back. We're now going to have a look at six rising Team Singapore stars that you may not know about to look out for this coming SEA Games. Now, we all know the big names in Singapore sport, but these athletes are important athletes in their own right and they have the potential to be big stars in the upcoming SEA Games. And the first one we'll look at is Noor Zuhaira Yazid from Pencha Silat. Now, lest we forget, she is the 2017 SEA Games winner in the Tunggal, which is the art the performance part of Pencak Silat not the tanding where you know you have the fighting and, and you're on the court and on the mat going up against an opponent so Tunggal is not really as known or as fancy as tanding but she is a 2017 SEA Games champion she is the 2018 world champion and 2019 she's looking to make it back to back SEA Games gold medal so Noor Zuhaira Yazid from Pencak Silat is the first one to look out for Certainly an exciting sport as well, Pinchak Silat, and all eyes on that. The next promising Team Singapore athlete to keep an eye out for at this coming SEA Games is Jonathan Tan from Swimming. Now everyone talks about Joseph Schooling, the Kwa siblings, but Jonathan, at just the age of 17 years old, is now the national record holder for the 50-meter freestyle. He has broken the record that was previously held by Joseph Schooling at the 2015 SEA Games one of the exciting prospects to look out for. Now, Jonathan Tan, I saw him at the ASEAN Schools Games in Semarang earlier this year. And another athlete who performed really, really well at the ASEAN Schools Games is our third athlete to look out for, and that is Captain Kam, who competes in the high jump. Now, he won gold easily in the ASEAN Schools Games, but he was disappointed after the event when I spoke to him because he did not break the record. So now he's not even looking at getting gold medals at his talent. He just wants to break records and I think he's the second uh, highest jump in the Singapore records with 2.15 meters but he's looking to break Wong Yu Tong's record of 2.22 meters that was set back in 1995. So Captain Kam want to look out for and has very high aspirations in the high jump. We're looking forward to our number four athlete and that is Firoz Rama. Now, skateboarding is making its debut at the SEA Games this year in the Philippines. Now, Firoz Raman, not known well locally, but internationally, he has competed all across the world, has 10 international titles to his name, has competed in the Asian X Games, and even competed earlier this year in the Tampa Pro 2019, which is considered to be one of the most prestigious skateboarding events in the world. Not known, as I said, in Singapore, but he has the opportunity to put Singapore on the map locally. Funny that I say that, even though internationally he has put Singapore on the map, but an opportunity with skateboarding making its debut in the SEA Games to put Singapore on the map in the Philippines. Now that you've said it, I mean, you do have a lot of sports that where our athletes actually are better known overseas than they are in Singapore. So it's time to really keep an eye out for our own athletes and to cheer on our team as one team Singapore. Our fifth athlete for the top six rising stars comes from the popular sport of badminton. It's not Lo Ken Yu, it's not Yo Tia Min, it is Jaslyn Hui. She's 19 years old and just last year she was competing at the Youth Olympic Games. Now we did have an interview with her in our Road to Sea Games feature. It's the first year she actually came into the senior circuit and so she's still pretty much looking at it as a learning opportunity for the Sea Games. But if you've seen her play, this is one athlete you definitely want to keep an eye out for. She's really rising up the ranks. Badminton is such a good sport and it always gets medals for you in the Sea Games. Our sixth and final athlete to look out for in the upcoming games in the Philippines is Danisha Mathia Lagen, a boxer. She's making her debut at the Sea Games. She's been coached by Mohamed Ridwan, now a professional boxer, but he also never won gold for Singapore in the SEA Games, three times a bronze medalist. But a reason why you should look out for her is she has the potential. She's a very small, demure girl, but has a big punch on her. A reason why as well you should look out for Danisha Mathia Lagan is because of her day job. She is a forensic technical officer, which means she looks at dead bodies during the day, examines cause of death, so she does that during the day and in the evening, she punches live bodies. So bodies every day long, all day long for her. 
and she is one to look out for at the 2019 SEA Games. And that rounds up our six rising stars from Team Singapore. Many other rising stars from Team Singapore to look out for, of course, not just these six. And you do want to keep a lookout for them in the coverage that will be made available to Singapore. 12 sports, I believe, from Toggle, but also One Play Sports. You guys have other sports that are not going to be available on Toggle. Yeah, we'll have four other sports to speak of. Rugby, Penchat, Silat, Squash and Netball to look out for at the SEA Games. So, you know, we spoke earlier on about Singapore sending the biggest ever away contingent to the Games. I think in terms of media coverage, it's going to be the biggest as well in terms of the media coverage. So, plenty to look forward to and we'll go and have you covered all the way through from even before the opening ceremony all the way to the closing ceremony on the 11th of December. That's right. And if you are going to be in the Philippines for the SEA Games, it doesn't matter if you are an athlete, an official or a fan. Do tag us in your posts and your IG stories on Team Singapore. We want to see all those stories coming in. We'll see you very, very soon.